Zorin OS is not one of those distros that I've spent a lot of time with, so I'm not all that familiar with it. I know the general concept of it, and I know that they specif specifically target new users, and I know that they have done a really good job in making their desktop environments their own without having to go through and actually fork a desktop environment and creating or creating a new one. So those that's about the depth of my knowledge of Zorin OS. So I thought it was about time that I actually took a look at one of their releases. So today we're going to be taking a look at Zorin OS 16 Lite. Now this comes with a very customized version of XFCE and it should be really pretty. So we're going to take a look at it. Let's go ahead and jump in. So while we're waiting, we know that Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu and I believe it's based on the latest LTS, but I could be wrong about that. We'll check that once we get in there. So we have some nice animations here and we have a cool wallpaper. So this looks like the Ubiquity installer. So we're just going to go ahead and install it right off the bat. We'll see what it looks like after we've done the install. So this is English, English US. That's correct. We'll hit continue. We don't want to download updates. We'll just do all those at, at the end because you'd have to update anyways. Might as well do them all at once. And then we don't want to participate, participate in the census this time. And we'll keep the codex stuff. Go ahead and do next. Or continue. Okay, so we have the regular partition thing here. If Do they offer... They do offer ZFS here. So if you wanted to use ZFS, you could do so. And you also encrypt your drive here. Still no option here to have separate home and partitions automatically selected for you. So you'd if you wanted to do separate home partition, you'd have to go through and do that yourself. I wish more installers would go through and actually enable you to do the separate home partition uh, with their automatic partitioning tools instead of having to go through and do the partitioning yourself because that would be uh, really cool. But honestly, there's not a lot of distros out there that do that. So we'll go ahead and hit install now and then uh, continue. I will say without any borders around this, this stuff kind of blends in. You know what I mean? But being a little judgy, Matt. And then uh, New York is fine. We'll enter my name here and we'll call this Zorin VM. And that is fine. And we'll enter a super duper password. And then we will go ahead and hit continue. And it's going to hit install. I will go ahead and cut the video here and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, there we go. It looks like it took about five minutes or so. So about normal in terms of installation of Ubuntu dis based distro. So I'm going to go ahead and hit restart. We'll see if it actually ends up removing the ISO from the boot partition, but we'll see. Sometimes VM, the virtual machine does, sometimes it doesn't. And it did. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter our super duper password. And this is XFCE like you've never seen it before, I would say. Now, we have a little bit of a tour, so we're going to go ahead and start tour. So open the menu to launch apps. Okay. So you can see right away that this is kind of funneled towards new users because most people are going to know that's what you do. But you can tell how they've done the tour that that's who they're focusing on. You can choose your desktop. Look with Zorin Appearance. So let's go ahead and launch that while we're here. So... Let's see, so we got two different options here, and we can either do this one, which is what we're on, or this one, which appears just to make the launcher icons down here to go away and change it with more old-style Windows Windows open things. Uh, you can obviously get more layouts by upgrading to their Pro version. And the last time I tried Zorin OS, which I have tried it before briefly, I seem to remember them giving you more options, but they've changed their layout or the number of distros that they offer versions that they offer so uh, it looks like those are the only two, two layouts that you get for free not that you couldn't go through and just recreate those if you wanted so here's the the dark mode which we're going to change because uh, the dark mode should be the default and we'll change the accent color to purple desktop so these icons on desktop by de you could do that by default so you don't have to download anything like gnome tweaks or anything if you were using a version of gnome this is xfce so you should get that well, I wonder why they even have to enable that, because XFCE has... I wonder if you turn that off, if you can't put any icons on there at all. Yeah, you can't click... If you turn that off, you can't click on the desktop at all. Okay, I didn't even know that was something that XFCE could disable, honestly, to tell you the truth. Okay, and then you can change fonts here as well. Okay, so that's cool. All right, moving on to the next thing in the tour. Set up your 
speed up your virtual machine and install guest editions. So it detects automatically that I'm in a virtual machine and offers to install guest editions. I'm not going to do that. I don't need them. But if you are going to be using this in a VM, that's a cool touch. And then this is going to be the software center. Well, we're going to, I'll focus on the software center here in a sec. Well, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, and then this is the, it. So we'll visit the help page if we, if we need help and we hit close. So that's the tour. It's a nice little tour. It's not full of a lot of information, but you can, you know, it's not meant to be, I don't think. Uh, this is a typical GNOME Software Center thing or Snap Software Center thing, which depending on which one it is, they both tend to take a long time to load that first time. So it looks like they're going to be focusing on flat packs instead of snaps. But while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and take a look at the menu, shall we? So this is going to be, oh, there's the Software Center. Okay, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Terminal emulator. Okay, so this is XFC for terminal. I wonder why that, when you search for terminal. So this is the terminal emulator here is just like a, um, like a shortcut to this. Okay. All right, so if we do uh, uname dash A, we're seeing this is going, it, this is using kernel 5.11. So not the, most recent is NeoFetch installed? Is not. So let's go ahead and do our updates here then while we're here. See, there shouldn't be too many because this was just released. Yeah, there's not too many. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so the updates are done. That didn't take very long at all. So we'll do sudo apt install NeoFetch. Zoom in here a little bit. I wonder why I bordered. I did yes. Try again. Did I do something wrong? Yeah, apparently I hit equals yes, which I have no clue how I did. Oh, because I was zooming in. That's the reason why. Okay. All right. So we there we go. So this is XFC using the XFWM4 window uh, window manager. This is using these themes here. These are custom Zorn themes. Uh, you could obviously change those. I wonder. Cause normally XFC is a whole bunch of different tools. We'll take a look at that those in a minute. This is um, Bash five point zero point seventeen. So I don't believe that's the most recent either. And uh, as as we said earlier before, it's um, five point eleven is the kernel. Uh, we're looking at about seventeen hundred packages, which is about normal for a Debian slash Ubuntu based distro. And there's twelve flat packs installed. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this out here. And uh, we'll come back to you Software Center a little bit later. Um, we don't need to do that. We just did that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go through the applications here now. Just real quick. Interestingly, this is how you have to click on the category. So we have Archive Manager, Clocks, Fonts, Onboard, Redshift is here by default, XF burn, which is still included with a lot of, lot of Linux distributions and I'm not sure why. There's some uh, games here, nothing uh, unusual. Uh, nothing like Steam or anything pre-installed, so you'd have to install that if you wanted to install it. The graphics, we have GIMP here, and the uh, LibreOffice suite as well, which is where we'd see in the office here, is LibreOffice. Oh, what version of LibreOffice? We can go ahead and take a look at the LibreOffice writer and see what version you get. It is nicely themed, so it fits in with the rest of the operating system, which is nice. And they did change, if you notice, by default, LibreOffice comes with their standard old, and I mean old looking, interface. This is the tab interface by default. So that they, they've changed this to the tab interface by default, which is good. So we can go here, go to, surprisingly, I can't find, oh, there we go, right there. This is version 7.2.3.2. And I believe that's going to be the most recent version, but or at least close. So that's cool. And I I love that they changed the this 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 should be the LibreOffice UI by default. I mean, yes, it looks like Word, but it's good. Anyways, that is LibreOffice. Let's go ahead and multimedia here. I believe we skipped internet, so we got cheese, all the the normal stuff, rhythm box for your music, Prol. Is that what that is? Parole Media Player? I've never heard of that before in my life. I wonder why they just didn't use uh, VLC, but that's just that's a choice that a lot of distros make. So we have Firefox by, as a default web browser. We have Thunderbird as our mail client. And here's where I'm interested. Because XFC has all, their, its own settings manager. But Zorin also has its own settings manager. So it'll be interesting to see if they've taken anything out. So we have Zorin Appearance, which we already looked at. Um, I'm going to say they haven't actually taken anything out. Where's the 
let's see if there's a, a settings manager here settings okay so yeah this is the xfc settings manager but it looks weird because it's themed right right out of the bat so it looks a little different to me but it's been a long time since i've used xfc you know any for more than like a few minutes uh but this is going to have the normal fc f xfce stuff in it including your ability to change themes if you wanted to change themes so this would allow you to do things that are outside of the zorn appearance app change icons fonts and settings obviously and then you can go through and change your hardware settings and window manager settings and stuff like that so uh yeah that is the xfc settings manager so if you're if you're used to using xfce this is still here so that you can still manage your xfce desktop just like you normally would so let's go ahead and open up a web browser here and find the release notes see if we can't see what is different from the last version now you gotta remember i didn't use the last version i think i did a video on zorin s before now that i'm thinking about it but it's been so long ago i don't even remember i've been youtubing now for a whole year and obviously i can't remember every video i've done because uh, memory is for young people um anyway so let's go ahead zorin 16 oops light release notes here we go Zorin 016 has been refreshed with a revamped and refined appearance out of the box. We've introduced the new, more polished default theme from Zorin 016 that's easier on the eyes. You'll find detailed touches and delightful animations throughout the anim throughout the system. Let's see if we have. I'm guessing that the, the, the any animations would be kiboshed by the VM. Um, so we also have some more artwork and desktop wallpapers, which actually we can actually look here if we look at um, desktop settings. So these are the wallpapers that come pre-installed. Let's go to something a little bit more summery, I guess. It's uh, at least not so wintry outside. These are nice. There's nothing here specifically Zorn branded. Branded. Nice wallpapers. So we can close that. That's just the normal XFCE wallpaper uh, desktop manager thing. A new taskbar with window previews. So if we hover over this, apparently that's only with the other. So let's go ahead and join appearance and choose the other other layout. Apparently, if you hover over the ship, you, you get uh, window previews. Okay, that's cool. Okay, additional desktop layouts in the Pro Light Edition. Those two words don't really go together, but okay. So the it says we're introducing two new desktop layouts for Zone OS 16 Pro Light, Chrome OS like and Windows Classic like. So, as we saw here in the appearance, if you go through and pay for them. You can get some, you get the Mac layout, you'll get Windows, you'll get something more traditional like GNOME 2. I think that's what that kind of looks like. Uh, and actually this more looks like the, I bet you that's going to be more of a Chrome OS and this is going to be the Windows version. But there's no, there's absolutely no reason why if you didn't want to shell out the cache, you couldn't go through and re, you know, recreate those on your own. Uh, that's the thing about Linux. So... The Windows Classic like desktop layout uses a traditional list style taskbar with a simple app menu designed to feel familiar for veteran computer users. I just want to tell them that Windows hasn't looked like that in a long, long time. And they did say classic, so they were really meaning it. The new layouts, new layouts complement the four other layouts which have been tweaked and improved since Soranos 15 Lite. You'll be able to choose, so I was right, you used to be able to get those layouts in the non-pro version or at least that's the way it makes it seem here uh, you'll be able to choose between those desktop layouts in the layout section of zorn appearance so here's a picture of those layouts or at least a couple of the layouts here so we got the mac watch like and gnome 2 uh, like layout and we have the windows like layout default and the windows list layout so those are cool and they they've apparently gone through and redesigned zorn appearance which is this app here, which you where you had opened up? Um, honestly, I don't I don't really remember what this looked like before. My my time with it was really short before as well. Um, I think maybe the theme and the layout and all this stuff was on just one page, and but I could be wrong about that. In zero sixteen, we refreshed the layouts to make it even easier to find customization options with the category tabs moved from the top to the left side of the window. Desktop layouts have been separated into a dedicated tab and you can now set the size of desktop icons independently from the files app. Okay, that's cool. Oh, we didn't look at the files app, so we'll look at this. So this is going to be, I believe this is going to be Thunar. Yep, this is Thunar. Thunar is a good 
a window manager, or, or excuse me, a good window manager. I got window managers on the mind. This it, Thunar is a good file manager. It's not my favorite anymore. I moved to Nemo, and then I moved obviously to Crusader, which is now my absolute fave. But this is nice. I will say that the touch touch targets on the edges of the windows can be really finicky. Apparently, you can only move it from the top. The top seems to work fine, but if you hover down here at the bottom, getting the the, the arrow to show up to resize the window is I saw it flash. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that the the target for those the bottom corner seems to be really off. So if you can see that, I mean you can barely see it with my face there. It's uh like it's not really in the corner, it's more a little bit up. So that's a little bit up. But the, it's weird because the top and the sides have much better targets. Okay. But anyways, that's just a small thing that I noticed. Okay. So let's go ahead and finally take a look at the software center. So this is probably GNOME software. Yeah, it's 3.36, so it's pretty old in terms of where the software center is now. Uh, GNOME has gone through and redesigned the software center since this point, I believe. And uh, let's see here, we can go through and, uh, ah yeah, this is what I was remembering right here. So you can choose from the Snap Store. And uh, you can choose several different versions from the Snap Store. And um, apparently, wonder why I was saying uh, at the beginning I was saying update flat pack or something. So apparently, this comes from Snap the Snap Store. I wonder, like, uh, let's choose when we know that it has a a flat hub version. Uh, you can get it from some things from flat hub. So so there's their store here pulls from Z the Zorn OS repositories from flat hub and from the Snap Store. So that should give you a really broad range of software. And it looks like they know what they're doing. We're looking at you, Elementary OS. This is how you do it. Uh, I can say, uh, yeah, this is a store that has, is gonna pretty much have everything in it. So let's just go ahead and search for Steam here. Uh, which Steam was right there on the, fr the front page. So obviously they have it. Yep, they have Steam here. Uh, I don't even know what I'd go through. Like they have Lutris. Do they have zero AD here? They do. So it looks like the software selection is really, really good. So it, what about something rare like Audacium? No, I didn't quite think so. But you can install that using apt, I suppose. So that's the software center. Do we get a terminal? Yep, we do get super or control T does give us a terminal. So we can look for go to htop here. htop is not installed. We're using about 1.75 gigabytes, but we've been opening stuff up, so that's not going to be accurate. Uh, it's using 97 tasks, 330 threads, which is an interesting thing. We also have Firefox open, so we can close that, and that should get us some, yeah, that took off quite a bit of memory usage there, as well as like half the threads. Oh, Firefox, what are we gonna do with you? <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, anyways, um, most of what the mem the CPU usage looks like, uh, these resized targets, is going to be mostly the Xorg stuff. That is, I'm going to, I'm just very curious. I'm going to go ahead and restart this and um, check and see what the memory is when it's fresh. Because I'm very curious, because XFCE is very light, right? That's the point of XFCE. Like, I'm talking like, what, 600 megabytes is what it should use around there. So we'll see what it is. So free-m is using 602. That's exactly what it should, that's exactly what it should, that was a pretty good memory there, Matt, that you remembered that. Anyways, so, yeah, it's using XFC, it's just as light as you'd expect it to be. Uh, and Firefox still uses a ton of threads. Imagine that. Okay, so anyways, that is Zorin OS 16 Lite, the free version. And uh, overall, it's very good. If you're switching from Windows, this would be a really good option for you because not only is the UI familiar, but also the it has a ton of software in the software center, just a ton of selection. And I mean, you won't ever have to worry about whether it's pulling from Flatpak or Snap or Zorin as long as the 
application that you're looking for is there. Chances are, if you're a new user, you're never going to notice that drop down at the top there of the software center anyways. You're just going to say, hey, look, look, Steam is here, install, and it's going to install, and you're going to go about your married days of playing games and stuff. So I think this is a great new user distro. Um, whether or not it would be for me, I it would be fine. I could go through and make it my own, but I don't think that I'd ever keep those the the themes that it has. It's just a little bit too flat for me. And it's really, especially you noticed in, in LibreOffice how everything was just kind of like a flat pane and there was no definition to any of the buttons and stuff. I don't want skeuomorphism, but I also don't want complete flat. I want to be able to see, especially in like a dark or blinding white mode, uh, some definition to the, where you're supposed to click uh, should would be good. So I would change the themes, but that's not, you know, hard at all. With XFCE, you don't even have to install a tweak tool or anything. You just go ahead and, you know, use the theme manager from XFC that, ha that is built in. Uh, so that that is Zorin OS 16 Lite. If you have thoughts on this distro, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jack Time Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Emma Teus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, the BSD's Rap, Peter A, and Crucible. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you next time.